Mason. Yep. Want to hear a story? Let's do it. There was a, uh, there's this community in Scottsdale that I was working at, and <clears throat> we were over at this person's house taking care of some of the stuff on their property. I think we were, we had done an assessment for them, so we were coming back to take care of the work there. And it was a, a gentleman that was in his 70s. Um, he was a businessman from back in, I believe it was Boston. He owned a company that dealt with, uh, it was a roofing company for buildings and I believe I believe they sold uh, roofing materials and stuff like that and I love talking to people about what they do um, all kinds of stuff like that just like I get super curious especially in houses where it's like you have more money than God it seems like at times it's like yeah. uh, like what do you do so uh, gentleman starts talking to me but he also seemed to be like excited to talk to someone about it. So he ends up being like, hey, like come check out my office. And he starts showing me, he's like, all right, see this TV? And he's got this big TV set up in there. It's rolling through several different slides. He's like, uh, he was telling me, he's like, I used to be the CEO of this company. He's like, I've since turned it over to my son. He's taken it, he's run with it. I, uh, he's telling me he still had an active role in the company, but his son was the one who's really spearheading things, kind of integrating a lot more technology. And he's like, my son set me up with this. He's like, so they can be in Boston and I can be here in Arizona and know all the details of the company. He's like, there's one that had like a, a grid system on it. He's like, in those four right there, he's like, I can know what are our sales year to date? What are our sales for the quarter? What are our sales for the month? And what are our sales for the day? And he's like, it's updated like every five minutes or something like that. So I get the real reports right here. He's talking to me about the stuff that he's done, how like, like I mentioned, his son has taken over, stuff like that. Um, great experience. I like, it was one of those times where he's got some guy who's working construction in his house, like, and always being polite, professional, all those things. But Dude did not need to give me the time mm -hmm. of day that he did. And uh, at the end of it, he's like, hey, uh, I told him, like, I was planning on trying to get into business and stuff like that. He's like, hey, if you ever do get into business, here's my card. He's like, um, give me a call if that ever happens. <laughs> and if you ever want to talk about, like, I, I might be able to do, like, some business coaching or something for you. And it was just one of the craziest things where, like, I was just super appreciative mm -hmm. that... This guy could have just been like, yeah, go do your job. Here you go. But he he took the time to walk me through, hey, here's what I did. Here's what my company does. Here's like how it operates right now. And to even go farther to say, here's my phone number. Have you taken advantage of that? I haven't just because that was several years ago. And... Pussy. Well, it was. I think it was far enough removed where I, I also didn't... Like, part of me is also intimidated by it to where it's like, dude, that's... What's the worst thing he says? I don't remember you. Fuck off. That's true. Yeah. I should find it. Yeah, you should. I don't I, know where it is. N I'm pretty sure it's in one of the boxes that is in the apartment that we have not unpacked oh, nice. yet. Yeah, because I kept that thing. I held on to that. Should. Yeah. There have been a couple of those moments where someone gives me a card and I'm like, or their phone number, and I'm like, um, I do not want to bother this person, but that was extremely kind of them to do. What about that private jet guy? I I think I still have his card. I wonder if we can hitch a ride on anybody's. <laughs> like if he has to go pick somebody up, we can just hitch a ride. Well, he doesn't pick people up. He's the guy who schedules all the flights and the transportation. Oh, that's right. He doesn't do that anymore. Didn't he start off as freelancing? No, I think now he more does some of the freelancing. But he, if I understood correctly, like if... If they've got someone who's worth several million dollars and they're trying to travel from here to Vegas or here to Hawaii or here to wherever, and they're like, hey, we need a private jet, um, you give them a call and be like, hey, here's when we're looking to leave. Can you set us set it up with a plane pilot, get all the Any arrangements done? Hmm? Helicopters? It wouldn't surprise me if he could do that as well. He's working out of, he's working out of Scottsdale Airport, so um, I'm sure that the stuff that he's seeing is has quite the variety in it. Yeah. I wonder what kind of crazy people he's flown. I don't know. That's what, that's where I would have asked him. Yeah. Like some cartel, some drug. 
hefty drug dealers. <laughs> yeah, well, like when you think about it too, that, that was one of the things that's interested me. Just like how I mentioned, I love talking to all the people um, in these houses I get to work at whenever I get the opportunities to be like, what do you do? And like when, especially when I started, it's you're seeing like you're seeing a different level of money because mm-hmm. I think we both grew up middle class. Like, so we we weren't around wealthy people and then all of a sudden you're around wealthy people and usually the wealthy people you see are like celebrity or athlete or something like that. And then it's starting to realize, oh, these are, these are business people <laughs> for like the majority of what's happening. Mm-hmm. So it's... It, it's hilarious. There's one uh, house we were at and we found out that I think the couple had, they were the largest, they had the largest pig farm operation in like the United States or something like that. A pig farm? Yeah. Sick. Dude, like it's, it's nuts. Like at the end of the day, like you, you hear how some of these people make their money. One of them was a guy who, um, he was an executive for a multi-billion dollar like farming equipment company Mm -hmm. stuff like that and it's just you just forget that some of these humongous companies that are not like tech or something like that but are extremely valuable in our day-to-day lives that require like how often do you eat pork or how often like do you eat food (laughs) and it's they're a part of all of that just through farmers or through directly I mean, through yeah yeah my uh my grandpa i guess grandpa in-law my uh, my wife's grandpa mm-hmm. uh he's in the funeral i mean you know this he's in the funeral industry yeah i worked there for like five years uh but there was a point in time where he owned a private jet oh really but it was just too he didn't use it enough and it was too expensive for the fuel and stuff like that yeah but like i mean a funeral you know it's not like he owned a huge like like some of these you know big name businesses the what do you call them the s p 500 businesses yeah exactly the fortune 500 exactly you know he just you know he has a niche in a couple of different states but he has enough money to have a private jet if you wanted it yeah just little shit like like little shit like that random random things what people do but yet like multi-millionaires that's one of the things I loved even just about the podcast where like when I knew that I was going to be going into real estate, I didn't want to lose some of the conversations I had with people. So part of it was like, I wanted to be able to put out content in some way, but also be able to have conversations. And then it was like a year in realizing that there are these super successful people in weird fields that no one talks about, like in high school or like, Oh, do you want to grow up to be a guy who does custom gates or um, like an insurance broker or stuff like that. it's like no one asks if you want to do that but you can become extremely successful mm-hmm. in both of those fields or any of the fields for the people that we've talked to so it's just like it, it gets it's funny all right you want to hit the numbers yeah am I what Am I supposed to say something? Yeah. What am I supposed to say? You know what you're supposed to say. Oh, let's get hammered. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sledgehammers in the Office podcast, where we celebrate the heavy hitters on the job site and in the office. Today, I'm joined by Mason Oxendale. What are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking some Mio Energy in my uh, dad cup. Is this the uh, special red drink you always talk about? Uh, usually red, I go with black cherry, but this one has to, is actually, I think, strawberry pineapple. Ooh. Yeah, very delicious. Nice. So, another company we're trying to court out there just because we actually use it. And then, as always, Shamrock Farms, chocolate milk, the whole milk, because it's so dang good. Uh, the way we've got our podcast schedule set up is... First Monday of the month, we're doing a deep dive. Second Monday, we're going to do a house review. Third, we're going to have a guest. Fourth is going to be our call show. And if there happens to be a fifth Monday in the month, that's going to be kind of when we just hang out and uh, shoot the shit for the most part. But we did want to uh, give you guys some of the numbers that we're tracking on a weekly basis. So uh, after that, we're going to kind of jump into hanging out for the rest of the podcast next week a little teaser for you guys we're going to be doing a deep dive into what's going on in the airbnb market so we've been doing some research 
all ready to prep for that. Uh, I believe earnings call is actually tomorrow, Thursday, August 3rd. So we'll be taking a look at what comes out of that as well. And then the nice part is based on the timing of that, hopefully we'll have some uh, real good information to share with everybody. But in the meantime, we have the active and active homes and closed in the last 30 days for the greater Phoenix area. We're, uh, we use this as a guideline for uh, us in the greater Phoenix area and then also in other states if you're listening out of state. So active homes, 7,862, that's down 168 from last month. Closed, 4,963, that is down 444 from last month. Interest rate, that just went up a little bit from what we're tracking, that is at 7.13. Uh, two by fours, it's at 353, that's up like 25 cents. Plywood is 22.80, and I forgot to double check on that. That one is gonna be up $6.35. So it went down a little bit? Because it wasn't there like, it was like a $10 hike last week, wasn't it? Um, I believe the price might be the same from last week, but from a month ago, we're still up $6. Gotcha. Copper pipe, uh, 2781, that one's holding steady. So thoughts on the numbers we've, uh, from last month, we're seeing the closed numbers down 444. We're below the 5,000 mark, just barely. Any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, for the most part, it's. I mean, it's slowly dwindling down. I think a couple of weeks ago we had it where active homes went up like 50. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's just staying in that seller's market. Um, and, you know, there, we don't have the flock of buyers right now, obviously, with that interest rate. But we still got buyers out there just because they're trying to uh, sneak in before interest rates drop and maybe prices of homes go up even more. Yeah, and if we were to round those numbers up, you've got 8,000 active homes you've, and you've got 5,000 closing a month. So that that numerator denominator right there is, that's yeah. like like you said, it's it's still a seller's market. That's a lot of houses to be selling for the amount of inventory that we have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a lot of closing. People are still buying, people are still selling. Yep. So it's just a little harder to find that perfect home right now. All right, before we jump into... Uh, just hanging out for the rest of the night. We did want to talk about the median purchase price because we got our numbers update. This is going to be for the month of June. The month of June came in at $505,000. Uh, the previous month of May was at $490,000 for the median purchase price. We're going to compare that 505 in June of this year to last year, which was 529000 but we're gonna be looking at that saying, okay, that's a $24,000 decrease on the median purchase price. But what you pointed out uh, just before we got started is that for us in June, that's the fourth consecutive month with an increase in the median purchase price. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like we, we've been talking about the entire time, we saw things take a gradual dip. It dropped about $80,000 on that median purchase price kind of, and that leveled out and then we've been slowly uh climbing our way back out of that so uh any thoughts on the median purchase price right now um no, i mean just like we said it's a roller coaster so those people who bought homes at the high high price point um i mean you should have known that you the house was going to depreciate a little bit before it started appreciating but that drop you know wasn't crazy enough low we actually leveled off in time where we're going back up we'll probably have another downturn in it before it goes up to you know where the houses what the houses were going for back in 2020 but i mean that's this is i mean phoenix is one of the bigger markets one of the newer bigger markets so it's just this is the cost to live in arizona now it's not the cheap place to live that everybody knew and thought of yeah, which I feel like this should be an encouragement too for anyone uh, that does own a house in the greater Phoenix area. And they're like, if if we were talking to them, what was that, back in January, they're like, hey, we've seen an $80,000 decrease in our median purchase price. What does mm -hmm. that mean for me? And it's like, hey, don't freak out just yet unless you're planning on listing your house January 1. But here we are 
in the beginning of August, and those numbers are coming right back. So it talking about how the market was supposed to be mm -hmm. in terms of a gradual increase in the appreciation of a house. It's not supposed to go from 100000 to 300000 overnight. It's, it's supposed to be a gradual thing that will appreciate over the lifetime that you live in the house. And it, it seems that the median purchase price is trying to find its balance before mm -hmm. uh, we, we kind of get back, hopefully get back into that rhythm. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, a lot of those people, too, I mean, unless you're planning to live in the house forever, I don't know, a lot of people, you know, buy their forever house. Mm -hmm. I know my wife's all about that. I mean, I don't really want to call anything my forever, because if I win this $1.2 billion, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving. Um, but, you know, some people even have the decision, like, where it's a house that they don't want to, you know, they're, they grew up, grew their family in it, but they don't want to retire in it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain point where you want to talk to maybe your tax guy because, you know, if you're going to sell in a couple years, even five years, you can hit that capital gains number. So, you know, you sell now because there's a house out there that you want so you don't have to pay the 20 percent or whatever it is now, like 35 percent. I think capital, capital gains, gains. Uh, capital gains goes against whatever tax bracket you land in. So if I if I understand correctly, and I'm not yes. I'm not a tax accountant, so talk to someone. But who, still, this is I don't their think it's job. Yeah, it's I don't supposed think it's to be anything less it, than like twenty percent. Yeah, and it, I believe so. I believe so, and it's supposed to be taxed according to if you're in if your income is a hundred thousand dollars and you find yourself whatever tax bracket that lands you in, your capital gains get taxed to that percentage. If you're a person who's making a million dollars plus a year, you get taxed in that tax bracket. If you're a little below a hundred thousand dollars, you get taxed in that tax bracket. So it's it's a sliding scale all the time. Mm -hmm. But the uh, two fifty for you can make two hundred fifty grand on your home as a single single person. Five hundred for a married couple. Yep, that's a lot of money to make off a house. But that's as a long great as it's your way. primary residence for two of the last five years. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. And people in this scenario, they've been, you know, living in it for a while. Yeah. But, uh, but at the same time, you got to find a house too. That's more expensive. Plus, what? the interest rates don't help. Well. But what do we say? There's a scenario if, if for you, everybody. But if you also have that much capital gains that you're taking out of it, you're probably not necessarily counting on a loan. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we kind of turn this over to the mayhem for the evening? No, no. I mean, selfishly, I wish these interest rates would get a little lower. <laughs> so we can refi out of it? Yeah. Nice. Well, other than that. Cool. All right. Well, we're excited for a deep dive next week about Airbnbs. But in the meantime, we're going to kind of just hang out, catch up, because we haven't seen each other in a bit. So, uh, Mason, it's mm -hmm. Wednesday. It's not Monday. It is Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? Uh, nothing. I had a weird little cold. That's why we couldn't do it on Monday. I would call it a cold. I don't know what it was. It's a weird, like, 24-hour thing where, not like a bug where you're, you know, throwing up. Number two is not the same. It was just, like, sneezing, snot, headaches, just felt like poop, didn't want to do anything uh, for, like, 24 hours. And then late yesterday and this morning, woke up fine. Still a little stuffy and stuff, but like, I'm good to go. It was weird. That's funny. Yeah, because I was like, oh, you know, I was back at the gym. I've been doing my uh, uh, my cold plunges. I got my cold plunge back and doing it. I was like, fuck, man. I was like, why am I getting <laughs> sick? But either I got a weird 24-hour thing or I just got a super powered immune system and it just fucking <laughs> annihilated it and I was better. <laughs> you ever done the cool plunge? Uh no, not yet. No? We've done stuff like at my grandparents' house on like Christmas Eve where everyone oh, jumps yeah, in the you pool. Do, but yeah. But never like for the health benefits or anything like that? No, I ha haven't had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Are you do you like uh look into stuff like that like little like what do the people call it? biohacking uh little you know like health and fitness tips and stuff is that like 
something that interests you that you just like keep an eye on or you're listening to a podcast, read a book about it? Not necessarily. I'd say the biggest thing I paid attention to was like sleep stuff. Yeah. So, but other than that, not really. Um, like oh, if it, yeah, if it be, pops yeah. up on Rogan, then I'll hear about it through Rogan, well, especially whatever. like if he, he has Huberman on or something like that. Yeah, he talks about everything. Yeah. Yeah. I just figure a lot of people who do the CrossFit stuff, they're like, for some reason, a lot of people met, they're super into the biohacking stuff. Yeah. But I like it. It's uh, more of a hobby. Like, I like just learning about it and yeah. trying stuff out. But I really like the cold plunge. And nice little D D Y I fridge, freezer, chest freezer. A little Costco purchase. No. Uh, remember, I borrowed your truck to go pick it up from that random guy. All I remembered was you borrowed my truck. Yeah, that's what I picked up <laughs> was a, a chest freezer. Got a little uh, regulator thermometer in it so you can pick like a range to mm-hmm. keep it so it doesn't it's not like you have to like obviously you leave it on it's going to freeze the water mm-hmm. but you don't have to worry about turning it on for 12 hours shutting it off at night it just turns on and off and, and keeps it in a two degree range oh that's pretty dope yeah it was i mean i think it was 40 bucks on amazon little thermometer thing yeah do you do it first thing in the morning um uh, i have not um, we keep our house really cold at night. Like, we sleep at 73. Oh, dang. Yeah, so, like, in the morning times, I'm already cold. And the night before, I always have the... I would like to, but it never pans out. <laughs> I usually do it later, you know, depending on what I have going, like, later in the morning. And how long are you in there? Uh, four minutes. Okay. I've been doing four minutes. At what temperature? Uh, I have it at 55. That seems a little high. Well, I mean, like all the studies show, you only need to reap the benefits of a cold plunge. You need uh, 11 minutes total a week. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's all the studies were uh, under 59 degrees. Hmm. Yeah, I started at like 58. I'm not a, Yeah, my body doesn't do good to the cold stuff. Like <laughs> 55 is good for me. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd probably get in and be like, nope, I'm good. Yeah, it takes it takes me about a full minute and a half to actually get in all the way to my neck. So, yeah, but yeah, I enjoy that. Come by and take a dip. Although I do need to clean it out, though. <laughs> I'm start. Well, I've always been terrible with sleep, and some people would be like, "Oh, I have trouble falling asleep," or "I wake up a ton in the middle of the night." That's not my problem. My problem is just pure volume of sleep. And I think I've got sleep apnea issues, so uh, that makes it worse. But because I know that there's some people who are like, oh, I can survive off of less sleep than you. And it's like, good for you, buddy. But yeah, kudos. Uh, there's a certain point that I get to where um, I'll, I will run myself from the ground. I think we've talked about this. Like, I'll fall asleep just, like, sitting up in the middle of a floor or just like, falling asleep sleeping or uh, driving, stuff like that. And so, Do you fall asleep driving, like, in the middle of the day? Yeah, like at a light. The my anywhere between like one and four o'clock when mm-hmm. the sun's the brightest. Yeah. Like I have trouble, uh, like staying awake. Yeah. Especially because when I used to work at the funeral home, I was. I mean, I worked. You work early hours, get off. I was the same. I mean, I worked from like four thirty to twelve or one. Mm-hmm. So that drive home was brutal falling asleep oh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but like after four o'clock five o'clock i can drive throughout the whole night like darkness doesn't but it's something about daytime light and driving yeah just makes me fall asleep i feel like it's just there's something about the afternoon time period where all of a sudden like my body starts like wanting to just shut down like when my body's in true shutdown mode i'll fall asleep like it doesn't matter where like if i'm truly like my body's like you've got so much sleep debt that you rival the U.S. economy's yeah. debt. You know what you could probably do? Is just you, sleep more? No, just probably, like, you know, before you get in the car, just take a couple bumps of cocaine and probably get you home. That that would probably get me home. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Which, no, I was going to say, like, the thing that I've noticed is just I've been trying to pay more attention to it. So, like, my goal is to get, like, six and a half to seven hours of sleep at night. And if I'm doing that, then usually I'll be yeah, all right. Yeah, but have you ever heard of the aura ring? Uh, yeah, yeah, you had one. I you did. were telling me about yeah, it. Yeah, I lost it while moving. 
I swear I lost it when I was putting stuff in this uh, closet, the mm-hmm. one you removed. <laughs> but then I took all the stuff out and I couldn't find it. And you removed the closet and you still didn't find it. <laughs> so I have no idea where it is. Um, We're going to see Bobby or Joe like in two weeks and be oh, like, dude, I found this new <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that was really cool because, uh, like, you don't have Fitbit, do you? Uh, I would use the Apple Watch. Apple Watch is, I don't know, Apple Watch is, like, I think the Fitbit is significantly better for as far as, like, fitness tracking. Because mm-hmm. uh, other than that, like, the Apple Watch, you can buy, like, good apps and stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, the Aura Ring, like, it's more of, like, quality time of sleep, and it gave you a grade on readiness and your sleep. Mm-hmm. So it's, like... Yeah, you went to bed at 10, woke up at 6. So what is that, 8 hours? Mm -hmm. It'll say, like, 8 hours in bed, but then it'll be, like, 6 hours and 5 minutes of sleep. And it'll show you your how many hours you were in REM, deep, and light sleep, and awake. Like The new new Apple Watch does it, or the 7 does it. That's the one I have. I have the new one. Mine mine breaks it down for me. I just haven't bothered to mess with it really yet. Yeah. Which but it's it, cool because it it like you when you wake up in the night and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> I have an app too where it records, like your snoring and stuff. Mm-hmm. Are you snoring? I have a wife for that. You are you snore? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Apparently, it hasn't been too bad because she lets me know. Yeah, I can't sleep on my back, otherwise I get a backhand. Oh really? <laughs> and I turn. I just turn over. <laughs> Yeah, that or if I drink, I can't sleep on. I can't sleep on my stomach. That's like the worst for me. I don't, I, yeah, I don't. It's weird. I can't fall. Like I can't just fall asleep on my back. Really? It's just somehow I like just turn in the middle of the night or something like that. I'm a side sleeper. Yeah, it's my side or my back. I'm a side or half belly, with the uh, leg over the, <laughs> spooning the pillow. <laughs> But I'll note, like, if if I start to notice, like, my I'm just, dr- like, having to fight through sleep, every once in a while I'll go back and check, like, on the watch if it's got the sleep data and be like, oh, your average is. Mm-hmm. The other thing I like, too, about the Aura Ring is that, obviously, it tracks the uh, your heart rate way better than on your wrist. Mm-hmm. And that they also use that to factor in your like readiness and how well you sleep because it keeps track of your heart rate and everything. Okay, did you ever feel like with that though that it was a day behind? What do you mean? So there, I still notice it now that sometimes like if if I'm not sleeping a lot and it's my own choice, um, and then one day I'm like, all right, like it's catching up to me. I need to get like seven or eight hours of sleep. The next day I don't feel like boom, I'm back. I'm ready to go. I can sleep for like six hours the next night and then wake up that morning and I'm like, I, I wake up ready to go. So for me, it seems like there's a one day delay mm-hmm. on, yeah, it's hilarious because there's two also times when like I'll have just a couple hours of sleep, wake up the next morning thinking, oh, like I'm going to be dragging and then pop out of bed and be like, huh, for some reason I have energy, get through the day. And then it's the next morning I wake up, even if it is several more hours and I'm like, Mm. Well, it's just like you take power naps. Have you ever taken a power nap? You don't no. seem like a power nap kind of guy. I like to nap for like an hour and a half or just forget about it. See, if I sleep, if it's a nap over an hour, that hour is probably turned into two hours. And if I do get up, <laughs> I won't be productive the rest of the day. Yeah. But like power naps, if I like set my alarm, um, like 30 to 45 minutes or even 20 minutes, mm-hmm. that first 15 to 20 minutes after getting up is fucking awful, mm-hmm. but then it's like all of a sudden ready to go. Hmm. Yeah. Uh-uh. I was gonna say something earlier, but I forgot. Sleep, fitness tracking, yeah, biohacking. Biohacking, yeah. You ever done the uh, butthole sunning? I have not. Me neither. There were some people at the gym I used to go to that would do um, sound recovery. What's that? It's where the lady sits on a rock on top of a mountain and her boyfriend walks around her with a didgeridoo playing. A didgeridoo? The, like, uh, Australian big pipe thing. And 
make sound all around her, and apparently it's for recovery. Yeah. Well, when I take my power naps, I listen to binaural beats. But that's about as sound recovery as I go. <laughs> that seems a little weird. Plus, I don't get the butthole sound. Like, you ever looked into red light therapy? I've I've heard people talk about it, but I just that. No, I want to buy a module. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, sunlight. That's the another thing I've been doing in the mornings, is when the sun comes out, mm -hmm. just take like a ten minute walk in the mornings. That's good. Get some sun, especially. When I'm working inside a lot. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, my only thing with the biohacking stuff is it seems like, I don't I don't know what percentage to assign to it, but we'll say like, and you can tell me if you feel like I'm wrong on this, but I feel like it's like 10%, right? Whereas it's the biggest thing is going to be for people, are you exercising regularly and do you have a healthy diet? Yeah. If you take care of those two things. Well, there, I think there's three things. Okay. It's sleep. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, the one that you're lacking. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, but yeah, that means like all biohacking, those, it's meant for people who are, you know, top physical, not even yeah. necessarily shape, but they just, you know, and they're trying to get an extra edge. Same yeah. thing as supplements. Yeah. You know, you know, taking supplements gives you maybe a 0.05% edge. Dude, I didn't take, uh, like, protein supplements for the longest time. And then when I started uh, taking, like, a protein powder regularly, I the difference I noticed especially was uh, a lot less weight fluctuation mm -hmm. where it would be, like, my problem is usually, like, if there's times where I can just go long periods without eating because I get into, like, go mode. Mm-hmm. But um, with, like, if I were to be like, okay, no, just, like, drink a protein shake and instead of just, like, skipping breakfast or skipping lunch or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, it helps me hold on to my weight so much better to where I was like, okay, like, this is super helpful. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily helping me just gain weight, but it's helping me just not go backwards. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, that, like, it makes it a lot easier that when I am eating, then it is going towards. Yeah, well, yeah, protein shake. I mean, I guess technically that's a supplement. I mean, obviously you want yeah. to get it from natural foods, but like, it's so hard now nowadays to do that. But I used to do personal training back in the day, and really, yeah. And uh, the big thing what would help most people, especially women, is that, like, obviously you know it's always you know good to have a, a calorie number to hit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but like. Everybody's so caught up in like the ratio, how much protein, fats, mm -hmm. and carbs. But I noticed that if you just pick a protein goal mm -hmm. and you hit that every day and let your fats and carbs fall wherever they may fall, mm -hmm. but it's still with you know within your uh, calorie range, significantly changes. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Significantly, I mean, they I say. I feel like that would be. That's what I'm doing right now. I try to hit 180 grams of protein a day, which is fucking hard. I need to jump on that diet with you. You should. I mean, yeah. What was it saying? If you're an athlete, uh, one times your body weight, or 0. 0.8 right. to 1 yeah, grams per your body weight. Oh, yeah. Not yeah, ounces. so if you weigh 200 pounds, you're, <laughs> yeah, you would be looking to get 180 to 200 mm -hmm. grams. Yeah. Um, but, like... Honestly, like if you're if you struggle with that, if you send it, if you set your goal to like a minimum of point of uh, point six, mm -hmm. point six to point eight is plenty enough. Yeah, and it's it's hard. Like it's, like unless oh, you yeah. eat a lot of meats and stuff, you have to like you almost have to drink a protein shake. Yeah. Although with my old age, I've noticed that I'm, but I'm pretty sure I'm like low lactose intolerant because mm -hmm. if I eat like you know a big old bowl of ice cream one day or eat too much cheese or milk or something for a couple of weeks I get like I've never noticed that just you know I just have shitty skin mm -hmm. my mom calls it oxendale skin like it's just dry <laughs> it's just not good skin so I've just grew up like that but I noticed that I always get like little like red, especially on like my thighs. Mm -hmm. But then like I was like, oh, let me cut this out, and I cut it out for like two weeks. Went away. That's crazy. And now every time I drink a whey protein shake, I fart a lot, 
and my poop's not normal. Mm-hmm. And uh, organic, what do they call it? Uh, vegan protein. Mm-hmm. Hey, vegan protein's not all the same. I mean, what was it, a couple years ago? Somebody did, uh, they took all the vegan proteins and they did like uh, the test on them to see how much actual protein or what's actually in there. Mm-hmm. And I want to say like 95% of the brands failed. I'm talking about like the main brands that you see in stores, even at Sprouts. So now I have to buy, uh, you've heard of Organifi? Mm-mm. Shout out to Organifi. They have a uh, complete, so it's not just like pea protein, it's like all of them mixed together, just mm-hmm. not whey. Yeah. Or whatever. And it's the only protein I can find because I'm not, I don't like the taste of it. Like some people like it. Mm -hmm. So they put a couple scoops of protein and then they fill up their 24 ounce shaker bottle of water and just slowly drink it. I'll throw up. (laughs) I put as little as water as possible and throw it down. (laughs) But with the vegan proteins, it's so thick that like 24 ounces still doesn't water it down. But this one I can put like, you know. 10 ounces in it, 12 ounces of water, shake it up, and it's thin, and I can throw it back easily. So That's funny. Yeah, plus I think I have PSD, PTSD from back in the day when I used to drink weight gainers and stuff. <laughs> and I'd literally have to go over the sink and just chug half of it and then, like, dry heave and try not to throw up and then chug the rest of it. <laughs> so uh, that was not fun. That's hilarious. Right now I'm... I'm in the middle of like a front squat cycle, so I'm trying to work on getting my front squat up because mm-hmm. I've had a poverty squat for the longest time and it's just What's annoying. a poverty squat? Uh, you suck at squatting. Oh, that's what you're. Talking and it's about. not for lack of trying either. This is, it's just annoying as hell. Yeah, that's but, another. Yeah, I'm not trying to turn this into a health and fitness thing, but that's another thing is that like, especially. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of uh, CrossFit stuff. It's because, you know, depending on what gym you are, they don't really focus on the movement. It's just do the movement for this many reps for this long kind of thing. Whereas, like, because all those big movements, they're, they're like, uh, they're skills. Mm-hmm. You have to practice it. And they're, they're very, uh, a lot of gain, but also, you know, if you don't do them right, you could hurt yourself. But, uh, so, like practicing a squat like what you're doing like you want to get better at a front squat and do more weight you got to practice it just like if you're to practice shooting a basketball and this is my thing as far as people talk about like if you want to get as good as you can at squatting be a power lifter if you're a crossfitter what do they do it's like go get on a powerlifting program so essentially like i've created a nice little program for myself where we're doing uh, several weeks of triples, several weeks of doubles, and then we're going to peak it out with some singles, and there's accessory work for each of those that are built into it. And all of that is based off of a powerlifting squat cycle, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing, but it's like, is CrossFit going to give you the best mile time or the best like um, gymnastics? Probably not. But in the end, it's for 99% of people that just need that general uh, physical fitness. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're going to be okay. There's yeah. people in the gym that I see, it's like, that are in their 40s or 50s or whatever that they go in there they lift some weights and it's are they going to be peaked out no but can they lift more than 99 percent of people in their age range absolutely and so it's like that's where i look at it as like if for the people who are going to the crossfit games which starts tomorrow actually august august 3rd so i'm super stoked about that but um like those people are like tip of the spear when it comes to that even even for them though like you're not going to find someone who like on the girl side you, you see some of the girls who can end up like at the olympics or stuff like that for mm-hmm. weightlifting or i think there was a rower who came over from the olympics into crossfit stuff like that so it's like you see people who kind of bleed over it seems mostly in the women's side um but like, you're you're still seeing ridiculous amounts of weight moved some crazy aerobic capacity come out of those people Mm -hmm. but it also comes down to how they train as well usually fits into a vein where it's like okay for my weightlifting i'm not just going to do a couple sets of squats or squat cleans power snatches whatever like once a week it's going to be like no no no. like in the off season we're doing a full-on olympic lifting cycle down regulating the amount of uh, aerobic work that we're doing because we're trying to increase the strength mm-hmm. to then hold it for the next season 
and then hopefully see uh, a return on that by yeah, the they're end of the Yeah, trying, they're treating it like a, I mean, probably like the real CrossFitters when it first started did it like that. But a lot of the people who just were going to do it or decided, oh, I'm going to open up a CrossFit gym. Like they didn't treat it like a sport. Like, no, a lot, like there's everyone, different phases and different seasons of a sport. I would say up until it was Matt Frazier just blew everyone out of the water, mm -hmm. everyone would do CrossFit just year round. Yeah. And uh, Matt Frazier, he would have an off season. So it, it was interesting like hearing like Frazier had an off season, Ronnie Coleman had an off season where it'd be like three months. And so for, for like, I know for Frazier just cause I've done a lot of more research in this area, but um, he would take a month off after the games doing nothing, mm -hmm. a month after that doing very light work in terms of like, if he wanted to do like, hey, go touch weights, mm -hmm. but nothing crazy. And then they'd start getting back into things and he would specifically have hey, what are the weaknesses we had from this last year and how do we attack those? Mm -hmm. So usually when you're that far out from the next year's games, you're going to work on strength. So they'll do, they, they'll do a full 12-week strength cycle if it's for, hey, I, I noticed that my deadlift wasn't um, comparable with the field as maybe my clean and jerk and snatch. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do a 12-week deadlift cycle so that hopefully by the end of it, cool, I saw a 30 to 40-pound increase in my deadlift and then hopefully that carries over for the rest of the season. But you don't do a lot of aerobic work until the season really kicks off in February. Yeah, you treat it like a sport. I exactly. Mean, you have off seasons. You don't do it. Basketball players don't do the same thing year round. Yep. Yeah. You know, they but work on things to get better. The early CrossFit culture was just nose to the long. grindstone all day, every day. Yeah. So the that's nice where thing about CrossFit is that. The because uh, I fell into this category even as, when I was doing personal training and even when I was training the kids uh, when I was coaching basketball I ran the, the training program um, they brought the uh, ass to grass squat mm -hmm. which is the I was all I was taught and then you know somebody teaches you uh, you know the night don't go below parallel because it's not good for your knees but now <laughs> we find out that it's significantly better for your knees yep. Uh, like, uh, you ever heard of the, um, ATG, the knees over toes guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I started doing some of the, uh, those workouts and stuff. I mean, like I just, I trained my, cause I have, there's something weird with my right knee. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on, but I've been trying to do it and everything is just trying to get the knees over toes, which you were told not to do. Yep. I had to redo my whole squat. Which, like I was never a big squatter cause I've never been a real big, like heavy lifter or what mm -hmm. i'm also never really trained like that i was trained in like the 12 the 10 to 12 range mm -hmm. um but i had to like i was like fuck it i'm gonna do this and i remember like doing like three sets of 10 or 12 when i first started i had to do just the bar i was at the fucking gym mm -hmm. doing three or four sets of just the bar because like after that six or eight, that eighth one going all the way down coming up is just like holy fuck yeah it took me probably about four or five months to be able to do my same weight as to grass as to what I used oh, to do. Oh, yeah. So. Which I think a lot of that is was probably a side effect of powerlifting because power, some of, I would say, especially equipped powerliftings, best years were in like the 90s and into the 2000s. And a lot of equipped powerlifting, especially, you want a vertical shin, so knees are not going over toes. You're loading it as much as you can into the hamstrings. It's a low bar squat and you're barely hitting parallel and then you're coming back up. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a lot of strength coaches who look at it and go, who are the best squatters in the world? How, so then how do I create the most power for my athletes, which is like, which then became uh, just the Bible for strength trainers. Yeah. And it's like, guys, <coughs> like, no, like it one, like, Sometimes hypertrophy is going to be the best thing, even over uh, some of these movements. But it's like if we do want to create some of that power, it's like let's stop doing some knee bends. Uh, where we're okay, we're we're putting like a yoke on the back of some of these mm -hmm. kids. It's like let's actually put these uh, muscles to work. Yeah, what's the, I've told you about the podcast. Let's do my pump. Um, I mean, they're big advocates. What does that one guy say? He always says uh, he wants to do the least amount possible to elicit like the most benefits mm -hmm. kind of thing and then yep. also like they do call the minimum effective dose yeah they do uh um 
like call shows and stuff and it's like there's always somebody that calls in and it's like you know i'm doing this and this but like i'm not seeing anything and they're like the they just preach like the bet if you're struggling or even if you want to hit another gear you're mm-hmm. doing good but you want to hit another gear you uh you have to do something that you haven't done before mm-hmm. so if you're a big power lifter you're power lifting all the time and you're barely you know you're still strong as fuck but you're not seeing it it's like dude go do uh um a fucking you know do olympic lifts or go do a fucking bodybuilder workout for four for four weeks or a month mm-hmm. or something like that just switch it up spark the muscle fibers um and get it thinking a different way then go back to your power lifting and then all of a sudden you're gonna be able to lift fucking more yeah so i want to lift more i should probably start doing that i'm a little bitch in the gym <laughs> i am Although I've always, been, I've always had like that weird dad strength. Yeah. Where I'm not very strong, like weights wise, but for some reason, like when I played basketball and stuff, like I was one of the, I just like going inside the paint stuff with the big guys. <laughs> and like, I never really got do- tossed around or like, you know, guard or like several, you know, they come, they try to hit you, they bump off of you, mm-hmm. and they're significantly bigger than you. So, I've been rocking that dad strength for a while. <laughs> I've been working out at 5 a.m. for like two and a half years now. Yeah. When you go into the gym at 5 a.m. versus going in in like the afternoon for me. I can't. Huge difference. That's I right. feel so much better in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Even if uh, like a lot of uh, the big timers, they, they do their workouts in the afternoon because that's when you're probably the strongest. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to the gym today after the podcast with Scott. Oh, yeah? Because he can only go at nights. He's got the and kids. I w- yeah, I want to... I need a workout partner. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the mornings are taking up. My wife works out in the morning, so I have to find something. I can't work out in the middle of the day. I just, like... I will have all the initiative, plans to do it. Time comes around, I'll get stuck in the middle of something. Mm-hmm. And just don't go. And then I just don't go to the gym, <laughs> so... I'm trying this nighttime workout. I've done it a couple of times. Not a big fan. Really? Yeah. Just because, like, some people, they can just go to sleep. Like, they're hot, tired. I'm going to go to sleep. Like, fucking energizes me. That's funny. Yeah. I used to go at, like, 5.30 at night. Mm-hmm. There was a time period where I would go, like, twice a day. And there'd be times where I'm leaving the gym and being like, I'm going to be back here in less than eight hours. Because I'd wake up for the like 5 a.m. and then come back at like 5 or 6 p.m. I remember those days when I was your age. <laughs> I remember those days. It was a good time. Yeah. Man. Just had more, yeah. I get like that sometimes. Like I could if I wanted to, but I just like don't want to either at the same time. I've done it before, so it just isn't appealing. We had this talk about, I wasn't trying to tell you not to do it. I'm just like, I just, I choose not to do it. No, yeah, I've got, every once in a while, I'll get this fire lit under my ass where I'm like, man, like, I'm gonna, let's get it. And then night after sex? uh, Not usually, but it'll be like, the CrossFit games are going to be on this week, and probably around Sunday, I'm going to be like, you know, Maybe I should put a little more time into this, but it's. I give it Did like you have a I give it like twenty four hours, and then business the business side of things is where I'm like, no, nah, like this is it. Yeah, you like, have different your priorities change. Yep. Because uh, didn't you do well at some competition, and then you were do you're going to do another one soon? Did that already happen? Yeah, that already happened. So, <laughs> uh, there's a couple stages to get to the CrossFit Games. So they have what's called the Worldwide Open, and everyone signs up online. It's three weeks, three workouts, um, and if you're in the top 10%, you go to what's called quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. I never qualified for quarterfinals. Uh, it was one of my goals last year to qualify. I felt like in with some of the work stuff that had switched over, I felt like my workouts hadn't been as consistent, so like I just didn't think like it was going to be there, but... Um, there were some things that we were doing in training that ended up really paying off. My just capacity was there. There were some movements that like we were just ready for. I ended up qualifying for quarterfinals, so I was 
super stoked. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the when, the day before quarterfinal start, which was going to be an online thing, and it's over the weekend between Thursday and Monday, um, you had to do five workouts. I ended up getting, I don't know what, some kind of, uh, at first I thought it may have been COVID. We did a COVID test. It wasn't COVID, but it was just something stupid. Dude, I was knocked to the floor like your little couple mm-hmm. day episode thing. So I ended up not being able to do it. So I was like, son of a... But next year, my goal is like, all right, let's qualify, solidify a spot, and then actually do it. So there you go. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, but the wife and I are talking about doing a competition in November right now because they've got, um, it'll be, I know part of it will be at the ASU campus and they've got like a swimming event in there. Mm. And there's a part of me that's really itching to do that just because I was a swimmer for a very long time. Oh, were you? Mm hmm. <coughs> You're not built for a swimmer. No. I worked like a motherfucker, but... You know what you should start doing? Hmm. American Ninja Warrior. (laughs) You're short enough, but not too short. You do CrossFit, you're probably super fucking strong. I think that would be good. I would need to work on the grip strength a lot more. Well, that in the... Oh, yeah, but I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, like, the stupid part is, like, I don't have the... I don't think I have the fast twitch or the strength for it, but size-wise, I'm... I need probably like. 20. I think you need fat. That's the thing. Like that shit. Like. No, no. I'm talking about. I need like 20 more pounds for like CrossFit, and oh, I'd be gotcha. like, if I had the strength and probably 20 more pounds, 10 you to struggle, 20. Do you struggle gaining weight? Yeah. I can get you to gain weight legally. <laughs> I know I say a lot of illegal jokes, but I meant that legally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm after my front squat cycle. I'm thinking about trying to put on like. Five to ten. I told the wife about it, and she's like, "You already eat so much food. How much more are you gonna have to eat?" She's just adjusting to <laughs> having like someone that actually eats like a grown adult. Mm-hmm. Well, my trainer back in the day, uh, I used to work with him. He actually coached. Uh, he was uh, he trained Kobe Bryant. Oh dang! But uh, during the. Um, his uh, the little scandal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he cut ties with everybody to start fresh. Mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, he used to do that. And he was also too. He had a uh, he was going to be the first bodybuilder to be signed by Nike. Oh really? Yeah. And to this day, so he, he took. He's against like, oh, what is the drug called? It's like it's not amoxicillin, but it's like a it's a what is what's that kind of drug? Is it oxy or amoxicillin? Amoxicillin. Like the Z packs and stuff like that when you get sick. Oh, um, the, f- the antibiotics. Yes, that one. There, was, yeah, it's like I think it was like the Z pack or something, which you could go down a rabbit hole if you want about the shit that pe- what's happened to people by taking that the those things Z packs. Yeah, but uh, he was doing something and tore his entire bicep and tricep and stuff. I've heard about that with some. Uh antibiotics whenever mm-hmm. i'd go to the doctor i'd be told like hey make sure you just do not get this one because if you're working out you like the achilles was the one that i heard a lot of where it's like you'll just yeah just fuck like these like, like just fuck you up too and yeah. this is not funny but it is it's not funny at all i don't know why i smirked <laughs> when i was thinking about it but uh one of the guy one of the guys we used to train he wanted to like see some of his his uh pose his lifts and stuff when he was um competing back mm-hmm. in, like way back in the day and uh, he had he had a couple on like a VHS or whatever because that's how it was like the it was it was the one of his shows that he did like when the show right before like he was supposed to like sign with like Nike and mm-hmm. endorsements and crazy shit like this and the fucking guy somehow like accidentally recorded over it so he lost the tape. <laughs> I, mean, I would have been so pissed off. He wasn't even like he was. He was upset, but it's like, like I would have been like, dude, fuck you! Don't ever come back here. I'm not training you anymore. <laughs> oh, I just remember. I was like, dude, I've been so upset. That's hilarious. That sucks. Yeah, it does. Oh man, went out to the lake this last weekend. Oh yeah, how was it? It was good. Yeah, had a good time. It wasn't bad. It wasn't in the one twenties this week. No, is the water was nice too. That was the big thing. Because if the water's good, you hear it about can, that girl though. That 
I saw the news story like the day before. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, ooh, hopefully they're not shutting things down. But yeah. I know. Do you know it was it was her own mom. Are you serious? Yeah. They had a bunch of people on the boat apparently, and they thought that everybody was back on the boat and just propeller. And I was just thinking, I was like, hey, I don't wouldn't bring my six year old on a boat that had like that was at capacity, mm-hmm. if not I mean, it might have been over capacity, yeah, or whatever. But like a six-year, that would have been like I feel like that should be in everybody's top priority. Like those, are like oh, is such and such on? Like not the adults. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, like you can pick. I feel awful. That's never cool. But yeah, was that was that the same weekend that you went? <laughs> it was like the next day. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was nervous that we were gonna show up, but they're gonna be like, no, we're closed right now. Yeah. But everything was fine and. Everyone was having a good time. We had... Did you go to the... What's that party nook called? We went to... There's a spot off of one of the boat ramps. There's like a little peninsula that we like to hang out at. Oh, yeah. I used to go to that one all the time. Mm-hmm. Where you can... Yeah, you got the boat, and then you can like swim up to it if you want to on the peninsula. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, Something there... Cove. Something Cove. That's what it's called. It's where like people go up there. It's kind of like a party cove. That's what they call it. At oh, least okay. they did back in the day when I was there. It's like a little cove area where everybody links up their boats and like people party. That's hilarious. Because that's what ninety percent of people go to the lake for. Yeah. Um, there's a there's this guy and his I think his wife. They have a pontoon boat out there, and it's like an ice cream truck on the lake. It's hilarious. He'll drive his boat right up to you. You pay sell them. ice cream. Yeah, fuck yeah. Ice cream sandwich, like just the, the stereotypical things you would think come out of an ice cream truck. Mm-hmm. Dude selling off his boat. It it was awesome. Taco truck on the lake, dude. You would clean up out clean there. Clean up just like well, you don't you don't really go out. You usually don't drink, but in uh, Scottsdale where like all like the clubs are at like Mm -hmm. 2 a.m. there's this little like taco shop it's not really it's like a they've got like the hot dog stands but they have they sell tacos Mm -hmm. it's fucking packed at 2 a.m. best tacos i've ever had yeah granted i could be biased because i was not sober (laughs) but those guys must clean up yeah so But it was a good time. We were out there till like eight thirty, putting all our stuff away, like in the dark. Really, <laughs> yeah. stayed out a little too late. We like stay. I don't know. I personally like staying out that late, just because usually it seems that um, it's just far enough out there that there's some kind of clouds, mm-hmm. so the sunsets are just beautiful. And you're like, there's people out there with you, but you see like the beautiful desert landscape mm-hmm. with the mountains and all the different colors and all that stuff, dude. It's yeah, I I love watching that sunset. So it's one of those things where it's like, all right, like I'll stay out here yeah. and watch the sun go down. There was because a couple it's weeks. Awesome. There was a couple years ago, my uh, went out to uh, Elephant Lake in New Mexico. Okay, with my brother. Well, I guess technically he's my ex brother in law, but we did like night fishing, and we have like the uh, glow in the dark bobbers mm-hmm. and stuff. And we went in there, you know, you know, not evening time, but you know, like five or six. So we got to see the um, sunset and everything, and that was pretty sweet. Yeah. The one of the things I love about Lake Pleasant, there's a lot of people in Arizona who give it a lot of crap. They'll be like, "Oh, it's dirty or the water's too low." I haven't had that in my experience. Like I, for me, I can get there in like thirty to forty-five minutes, <laughs> and it's just far enough away from everyone that you feel like you get away from like the busyness. Yeah. I. I like being in the mayhem. I like being in the business, but there's times where it's like when I need to go into rest mode, I it, like to just shut everything down. Oh, outdoors, I don't like. If it's anything outdoor, like, I don't like the busyness. Yeah, yeah, but I'm like for me, it's just mentally. It seems like it seems like a lot of clutter just disappears mm-hmm. in your mind, and I love it. Just soaking it up. Just like even just taking the time to sit in a chair and just look around and be like, "This is pretty dang cool." You ever been kayaking? Yeah, once. Well. Yeah. We went up to like Flagstaff, Prescott area to some random lake and did the kayaking thing. Mm Mm-hmm. It's way harder than it looks. Yeah. Oh, man. 
I got tired real. I was like, oh, this will be cool, you know. Was it your low back? It was my lower back and my forearms were on fire. Dude, I don't know if it was the thing we were sitting in or what, because my low back, like, very quickly was uncomfortable, and I'm like, I do not want to be here. I mean, you think about, oh, yeah, kayak, you know, you're just kayak, you know, go through the lake, take mm-hmm. on the scenery. It's a fucking workout, dude. Give me and on top of it, um... What was it? Abby went one way because she wanted to look at something. I went this way. And I went like the direction we weren't going, like out of the way. And then so to get back to her was against the wind. <laughs> that was awful. Oh, dude. One time uh, yeah, up in Illinois, same ex-brother-in-law. We, um, family's got uh, like a, a lake lot with like a, just a big-ass garage on a random lake in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, they got a bass boat, pontoon boat. They used to have a four-person jet ski, but a lot of shady things happened with it. And they had to fix it a lot and got rid of it. But uh, we took... Well, anyways, we were we took the pontoon boat out. Like, at nighttime, we were fishing and drank too much. It was a good time. <laughs> but then in the, we woke up early in the morning time. And we took the bass boat out to go catch some bass and stuff. And it was really windy that day. And then we're on, like, the other side. The lake's not very big. We're on the other side of the lake because the wind took us this way. And then um, the uh, before that, the, the motor died, like, it ran out of gas, which was fine because we had the trolling motor. You mm-hmm. know, we could get back or whatever. Well, halfway through, the trolling motor died, <laughs> trying to go against the wind. <laughs> and then we we're like, fuck, okay, we're going to have to do this. You know, we'll each take a paddle. There was one paddle. <laughs> So we took turns, one person with a paddle, the other person with two hands, going like this. And then as if this is about like 8.30 in the morning because we went out super early. Yeah. As we're like making the turn for like 30 minutes trying to get there, like two of the cars roll up. They roll their windows down just like staring at us like, what the fuck are you doing? We're like, dude, all the motors died. <laughs> and we got back. Everybody like, like we didn't have, there's no kids at the time. Yeah. Um. Everybody got, you know, like hanging out and because there was, there should be an RV over there. That's where we slept. And we both went back into the RV and took a nap. <laughs> but that was bad. That was awful. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah. That's all I got. Well, broke an hour. Yeah, and I have to pee really bad too. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. Uh, where can they uh, find you? At Mason Oxendale on the IG. Cool. At Saito underscore building to see what we're doing in construction. Uh, YouTube, we're going to start trying to add some more stuff. We've been saying that for a while, but um, uh, I believe this month we're going to actually try and start putting together some times to do some uh, basic how-tos, and we've or we've been working on some ideas to be able to throw on the channel. So we're going to try and build that out a little bit more Mm -hmm. and start integrating a lot of what we're doing um, through the podcast and then into what we're putting out on social media, stuff like that. So uh, excited about that. And then I'm I'm very confident that will all be happening. So, yeah. Yep. So until next time, keep shooting the shit and embrace the beauty of being human. That's what AI, that's what ChatGPT told me to say, to sign out. Yeah, that sucks. Okay. Until next time. I don't have it memorized. I hope your hammer stays accurate. Your Wi-Fi fast. Your pencil sharp. Your work blessed. See everybody. Blah, blah.